Now, you may not be aware of what a catalytic converter does. What is a cat? They're commonly known as cats. Well, it's not the furry thing that we give a fish supper to. A catalytic converter is a device that uses a catalyst to convert three harmful compounds in car exhaust into harmless compounds. The three compounds are hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, and nitrogen oxide, which as we all know, um, isn't any good for your health, but in particular carbon monoxide is a poison for any air-breathing animal. What does a catalytic converter look like? Well, there's an example of two there. You may not never see them on your vehicle unless you have the misfortune to be underneath it and look it up. But that's what they look like. And there's another one in situ. So why do they steal? Catalytic converters, I hear you cry in unison. It's only about the uh, size of the type, but the average catalytic converter contains one or two grams of three precious metals. Platinum, palladium, which up until recently I thought was a concert hall there in London, <laughs> and rhodium. So about 0 0.07 of an ounce in a catalytic catalytic converter. So for an effective criminal to do any good at all, he needs 14 or 15 converters to get one ounce of the metal, which sounds like an awful lot of work for one ounce of precious metal. So the commodity rates for these metals have skyrocketed in the last few years. The obvious reason why they do it is for the cash. And trawling around Birmingham, there's lots of places that will buy scrap metal, they buy all sorts of scrap metal. Um, but in, in particular, they will advertise for catalytic converters. So platinum is worth 1,000, take a look, 1,740 pounds an ounce. Not a money. Rhodium, 6,000 pounds an ounce and palladium, a thousand pound an ounce. So you can see, to get an ounce of these precious metals is well worth doing it, it's well worth the risk. <coughs> How many are you getting stolen? I hear you cry. Between April 2011 and October 2011, 30 forces fed data back to ABSIS, which is the ACPO Vehicle Intelligence Unit. There were 3,200 offences reported, and many of these were multiple thefts. And what I mean by that was that uh, the criminals would break into a yard where there, there may be 20 or 30 vehicles parked up and have the catalytic converters off all the vehicles, but that would only go down as one crime. So it's a multiple offence, but it's only one crime. Drug makers also use the catalytic converters to exhaust uh, the gases so that the fumes aren't noticeable. And for the methamphetamine users amongst us, of which I hope there are none, um, that's what they're doing. The difficulty I have with catalytic converter theft is that if I stop somebody on the side of the road at 2 o'clock in the morning and they've got 20 catalytic converters in the back of their van, I really struggle to try and identify them. There's no markings on them to help me to get a prosecution. Catalytic converter. Two rubber bands, you can see them in the back, and there's a nut, two nuts and bolts at the front. And away it comes, nice and convenient. But most of these have got spanners, they've got uh, their favourite tools, or uh, saber saw, and battery, the full battery powered, and the battery powered disc cutter. The dip, I've not used a saber saw. But they tell me that the one pound thirty a ton blades that can deal with twenty cap converters. They just chop. It's as quick as that. Zip, zip, and they're through the thin wall steel tube the, the exhaust pipe. Anyway, it's away. It's seconds. I've got one of them. It's a precision tool. It's just as quick. Well, you get some sparks. Wonderful thing. Uh, 
a dealer's talk phone done, on, on, as you can probably hear from South Devon, uh, and we've had dealer's compound, uh, or a fleet compound, 20, 20 a night, no problem. It only probably took them about a quarter of an hour. But a, it's that easy. And there's been the odd motor on, on bonus drives. <coughs> Unsurprisingly, there's some counter measures. Uh, Mercedes on their Euro 5 one, the latest Sprinter, they've moved the converter close up to the engine so you can't actually get access from underneath. Uh, but it's easy to open the bonnet. You smash the glass, get in the car, pull the release, and you get in from the top. So there's now a bonnet lock available for the newer Sprinters. Uh, you've got a key to get into the bonnet now. Uh, right. Now, there's some new devices coming on the market that detect vibration in the exhaust system. They're very selective, it's got to be the right pitch. Uh, cutting, you know, if you start cutting, it detects it. Uh, there's two or three about, in fact, there's a couple of different names, but it's the same bit of kit. It plants onto the exhaust system. Uh, and, and they've got a sensor that actually comes down to. However, a view that an exhaust system uh, presents an extremely hostile environment to anything electronic. You've got wide range of temperature and very high temperatures if possible. Uh, it's subject to very high vibrations, all sorts of vibrations, uh, and bombardment by high velocity debris and water. Stones thrown up, uh, it's a nasty place to put anything on the top. They need to, any product needs to be very well designed and proved to survive extensive on the road testing for years, not for months. I, I'd want to see some pretty conclusive evidence that it had been tested a long time before that one. But they're, they're going to work, certainly for a while. Another approach is to cage the converter. Uh, either a stainless steel shell, and stainless steel doesn't lend itself to being cut, it's nasty old stuff. If anybody's ever tried to drill a hole in stainless steel, I would know what it means. Oh, it's odds on you've broken the drill. It's nasty material. Um, so they put a, a jacket around it. And you should, somewhere. Oh, that's uh, the bit we were talking about just now that clamps on the exhaust pipe the sensor. And there's a cage, and then you tie the cage to the vehicle with these high security cables that resist being cut. Uh, that's one type. But there's another type that surrounds the cat with a web of cables. Again, if you can imagine trying to put a saw up onto that, it doesn't keep still. And you don't get an effective cut. So it's it's going to slow them down. 